Hello everybody, uh, a very warm welcome to you all who are preparing for the FRCS Urology Section 2 exam. I will be starting with the basics and would uh, tell you as to how to prepare for this FRCS Urology Section 2 exam using a targeted approach. Now this, firstly you need to know that FRCS Urology exam comprises of two parts. Section 1 is all about theory. Uh, while section 2 is about um, clinical based case based scenarios now after passing section 1 you progress on to section 2 now this youtube video particular this uh, video would be focusing on the section 2 exam now the section 2 is basically case based scenarios and it comprises of eight tables with two vivers each that is a total of 16 vivers in total and remember that each viva is of 10 minutes. Now, I will be talking about the different tables which you do get in the viva so that you are able to get the grasp of the whole exam. Now, the, the two tables are entirely on oncology. For example, the table one would be on uh, cancer of the prostate, penile cancer, testicular cancer. And remember that you do you get two scenarios from each table. So in this particular table of prostate cancer, penile cancer, testicular cancer, you get one scenario from the prostate cancer and one scenario from either penile cancer or testicular cancer. Then the second oncology table is about RCC, bladder cancer and TCC upper tract. Uh, and you can get two scenarios from any of these three. The third table would be bladder dysfunction and gynecological aspects of urology, including the neurourology as well. And you can get, again, two scenarios from any of these. The fourth table is andrology, BPH, and stricture. So you get one scenario from ED, infertility, andrology, like Peyronie's, etc., and one scenario uh, from BPH or urethral stricture. Then the fifth table is about emergencies in urology and you get two scenarios from this. The sixth table is pediatric urology and again you get two scenarios from pediatric urology. The seventh table is about stones and infection. So you get one scenario from stone and one scenario from infection. And the eighth table is about technology and imaging and you get one uh, scenario from technology and one scenario from imaging. Sometimes they uh, keep both the scenarios from technology but it's quite rare. Now I will go a little bit into the scoring system of this exam. Now uh, you need to know that the score ranges from 4 to 8 and 4 is a bad fail which in, uh, if uh, god forbid you do get win it cannot be compensated even by an eight in any other station so the score ranges from four to eight four is a very bad fail five is a, a borderline fail six is a pass while uh, seven is a good pass and eight is excellent and uh, the pass marks is around 576 and the total marks are 768 and uh, remember you should try to aim for a seven in each of the scenarios because seven can compensate some borderline fails or marginal fails like five and um, you do have two examiners on each table and sometimes there is a third person who is an observer and uh, you get three scores from each of the two examiners on each viva so and uh, those three scores what what do they score you on the two examiners well they score you on three separate uh, points one is your overall capability in diagnosing and uh, managing a condition your uh, the second score is based on your knowledge and the third score is how systematic your answers are uh, do you require any prompting as such you know that sort um, so this is about the scoring system now a very important uh, um, uh, aspect of this exam which every one of you must be aware of is about how many attempts can you take for section 2. Now uh, there are a maximum of four attempts which you can take in the section 2 exam and you cannot reset this exam after this. So um, you have a total maximum of seven years from your first attempt at section 1 to complete your exam or to pass your exam. And the reason why I'm telling you this is that you should be very well prepared before you actually appear in this exam because your countdown then starts. And if uh, for some reason you have applied for the exam but you do not uh, appear for the exam on the day, then you will lose your fees but your attempt will not be counted. And uh, then 
another important question is well how do we study for it that is the question the best approach to go for is to take one table at a time and then divide that into 10 scenarios um, for instance if it is a pediatric urology table you're talking about remember two scenarios will come from this table and so the 10 scenarios the way i break it would be undescended testis uh, disorder of sexual development acute scrotum posterior urethral valve vesicular urethral reflux uh, pelvic urethral uh, junction obstruction phimosis hypospadias uh, urinary tract infection and a urinary incontinence now, while preparing for these scenarios, you need to make short, concise answers as you have only 10 minutes to go through the entire exam, the entire history, examination, investigations, treatment and complications. Uh, you have to complete the scenario up to the complications to get the pass marks. Um, so the importance of short and succinct answers now you would understand do not answer like a final year medical student behave like a consultant answer like a consultant and if at any point you're in doubt or don't know an answer do not waste time uh, thinking about it simply just say i'm sorry i don't remember and move on because remember that you only have 10 minutes to go through that entire scenario and uh, get a pass mark on it and at the end of the day the examiners are very friendly they uh, do uh, understand that it is a very stressful exam and they easily move on and if for some reason you feel that you just um, uh, can't recall anything and you just don't know how to go about it just relax no worries everybody is in stress take few seconds compose yourselves have some water that a glass of water would be available on the table drink it and then uh, you know restart and what this is a very commonly asked question that what if a station or a table or a scenario goes wrong then what well the most important is that uh, you do not let it distract you um, you focus on the next table viva and give it your best and uh, do not discuss with fellow colleagues at the end as it only increases your stress level and uh, you do have a paper and a pencil on each table and this is a very important point which i'm going to tell you now that uh, whenever uh, you you're about to start a scenario um, take the pencil and paper and jot down whatever the examiner is telling you because it is uh, um, it leaves a pretty bad impression on the examiner if you keep on asking uh, what was the age uh, what comorbidities did you mention because at uh, you, whatever scenario they ask you have to answer um, uh, that particular condition uh, in relation to the question or the patient uh, which they have asked about and uh, if for some reason you have answered uh, incorrectly and after a few seconds you realize that your mistake you can correct yourself and uh, do so there is nothing wrong with it i have done it personally and what level uh, of knowledge do they expect from you well they want a day one consultant knowledge uh, but do not be arrogant be very humble uh, they just want you to they just want to see that you can start as a safe independent uh, consultant urologist and another important point here is throughout talking maintain eye contact with both the examiners and the observer if one is present even if they are not looking at you because they they this is this even gets gets you marks and the dress code on the day is very important dress smart get a good night's sleep and uh, no need to revise and keep on revising from your notes till the last minute uh, before sleeping because that just activates your brain and it becomes difficult to relax and sleep and uh, it's better to stay in the same hotel where your exam is being held or very near it and uh, do take snacks with you you do have it there as well but it is good to have something with you and smile and look pleasant and uh, remember your look all these matter remember your look clean shaven your dress your body posture your body language hand movement eye contact spoken word your voice and tone and all these do matter it is a doable exam even though it is a nightmare to uh, when you think of all the 16 tables it is a doable exam that is the most important thing you have to be very positive and you have to keep in mind everyone's done it and so can you 
work hard there is no substitute for working hard and some people are good with communication while others have good knowledge now this exam is a combination of both you need to really practice talking talk 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 and practice and uh, um, the results are available within two weeks of the date of the exam and i will be uploading more videos on different scenarios and hope this uh, does help all of you thank you